I want to give her reason to submit. You know, Thank uh, you. The, <laughs> you know, that goes back to the love, though. <laughs> yeah, the because there have hey, been times where women don't have any problems submitting when the male is doing his part by love loving. Yeah, yeah. you know, we will uh, always respect if they love. Mm-hmm. But but the the good place is to be where, you know, there's trust that's been established based on experience and not just faith. Yeah. <laughs> like that first verse we read goes on to talk about how, how we're joint heirs together. Like this is a this is a team concept. No, yeah. we're in this together. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another amazing episode of Let's Talk About It, our February series <laughs> that is basically dealing with Let's the Let's talk couples. about it. Let's talk <laughs> about it. Um, this is an amazing series where we are talking to the, the leadership of this house, the pastoral leadership of this house, about things of relationship and what better way to end this series than with the Deetons. I, I can't <laughs> strong. I can't think of a better way to go out swinging. You know what I mean? Just, you know, you thought so we were the first two episodes where, woo, just wait. <laughs> Please stop. Please. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I am here with Andy. How are you? I am good. Very You're good. Doing fantastic. I'm doing great. I'm excited for this. Um, this is an amazing conversation. And I think it's going to be an important conversation that you guys are going to shed some light on. And everyone kind of sees your, I don't know how to, how to preface this, is that you guys are like the fun couple. How that sounds? You, no, you're fun. Oh, you know, you're fun. Like, no, no, they're fun. But it means like some people aren't fun, and I'm not saying that. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, a, it's not We're like, just oh, more fun. Yeah. Just, no. There was one Sunday you got up there to do um, announcements, and Eric leans over and goes, isn't she so cute? I was yes. like, I love right. that. That's yes. cute. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's the is. heart of my statement. Right? Okay. There you I go. didn't land the plane on that comment, but that was the heart of I it. Got Thank it. You. I, I got it. I am still smitten by her. Oh, this, well, so what just happened there is a perfect intro. <laughs> yes. Communication. Um, we are talking about relationships. Yeah. And so one of the big things that we want to like, just get your opinion on and your perspective is the difference between when you, when you speak to your spouse that, Spouse in truth and love. You know, you can say something that's truthful without love. I'm, yeah. What? I won't tell on myself or anything. Oh. Yes, let's hear what you have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you have a story you want to no, tell? No, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We all can I'm, jump I'm, in on this. I'm really yes. bad at that. And I'm still, like, we're still young in our marriage. So I'm still learning how to, like, speak in love instead of just, like, gripe and complain and, like, have an attitude about everything. Give the facts. I, yeah, can't I know it's I know it's crazy to think I have an attitude about things, but sometimes I do and it doesn't come off like the best way. You know what I mean? Like I think we're all still, softly, still learning that. Yeah. We're all still learning that. It's a lifelong process. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your thought? Like so when you how did you navigate that for yourself? For your as a as your own marriage? Well, I have a scripture for you. Okay. Oh wow. So that's why I would like to start. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it says uh Ephesians five thirty three, it says, Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, talking to the husband, mm-hmm. and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So this kind of defines uh, the role of each. And there's other scriptures that define that define roles of the husband and the wife. Yeah. But this one in particular for us uh, kind of changed our marriage. It was kind of the 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 point where our marriage where we started getting it, it started clicking Mm -hmm. that I, that my job is to love and hers is to respect because men's language is the respect. Yeah. And women's language is the love. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. true. And so, uh, like I didn't realize when we started out that love to him is respect. Like it's not, I mean, hugs are good. I'm sure. I'm sure you would say and all that kind of (laughs) stuff, but he, he would tell me, you know, you, like if he were to say you don't even love me, it's like you're not giving me any respect. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. And so that was a huge thing. In so what way? But in what ways? Like, what's an example of like showing respect to your husband? Okay, mm-hmm. let me let me give you a verse. So early in our marriage, Coming you know, everyone, <laughs> everyone knows the Ephesians five verse. But I mean, when we you talking about submit wives submit? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. got that one. But everyone loaded, knows you know? that one, you know. But one that ministered probably more to me. In um, 
in our in our marriage and walking through things and doing the right thing because everyone's got to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to do the right thing. Yes. One person has to do the right thing, especially if you want God results. So um, I saw I found first Peter three. And um, this is also to married women. And it says, well, let me it says I'm going to read it in the Amplified. It says in like manner, you married women be submissive to your own husbands, subordinate yourselves as being secondary to and dependent on them adapt yourself to them so that even if they do not obey the word of God, they may be won over by, not by discussion, but by the godly lives of their wives. Mm -hmm. So it goes on and talks about, you know, don't let your um, beauty just be your outward adornment, but it says merely your outward adornment. So we should still look good, everyone. <laughs> you got to still wake up every day and look nice for your husband. Now you're preaching. And then, <laughs> and then, Calm it, goes, down. Yeah. <laughs> then it goes on and it talks about, Verse 4 says, but let it be the inward adorning and beauty of the hidden person of the heart, with it, which is incorruptible, that gentle and quiet spirit, which is not anxious or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of God. And then it goes on and it says, it talks about Abraham and Sarah, and it talks about how Sarah even called Abraham Lord. And then it says, and you are now her true daughters if you do right, and let nothing terrify you, not giving way to hysterical fears or letting anxieties unnerve you. So when I came, when I was confronted with these scriptures. Verse 2, I didn't read for a reason, says, when they observe the pure and modest way in which you conduct yourselves, together with your reverence for your husband, you are to feel for him all that reverence includes. Respect, defer to, revere him, honor, esteem, appreciate, prize, and in the human sense, adore him. Aww. And that is to admire, praise, be devoted to, deeply love, and enjoy your husband. You know? So lots of times. Sounds great. I mean, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. That's I'm what in. every husband <laughs> wants. Yeah. And on. so yeah. when to, for me, when we learned about like, for him to love me and for me to respect him, that kind of got rid of the crazy because, you know, if one of you isn't doing the word, the other one still has to do the word. So if he's not loving me, I still have to respect him. But typically what happens if he doesn't love me, then I don't respect him. And so then it just yeah, cycles. Yeah, I don't respect yeah, him, yes. so he continues to not love me. Yes. So then I disrespect him, and he continues to not love me. So somebody the point has to is, break the cycle. somebody has to break the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, someone has and to pull up. Somebody's got to do the word in the relationship. If both people aren't doing the word, uh, then it's there's going to be issues, right? and you're yeah. going to continue to go around the same boat. Mm -hmm. So hopefully there's someone in the relationship that on that day, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, hopefully both of you are, but... Um, you know, like there'd be times where say I would come home and I could tell she was, you know, for lack of a better word, agitated. Mm -hmm. And so we often think that that, that has to do with us. And so anytime somebody's that way, we, th we think, well, they're, th what did I do and all this? And it was that there was somebody else that spoke mean to her or whatever, something happened during the day, or th there were things that she was thinking about that didn't have anything to do with me. Yeah. You know, and so instead of like <laughs> diving into that and listening to her and loving her, then I would assume, oh, well, this is about me. And then I would go on the defensive, mm -hmm. you know, and so then then that's where you have the conflict. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important when we talk about communication that we understand, you know, like when God said, you know, it's not good that man be alone. I'll make for him a helper. It's someone that is uh, compatible, someone that will help him, that that compliments mm -hmm. Well, for example, <laughs> I know what he's going to say. <laughs> when you go into the mall parking lot and you're looking for a parking space, it is innately I love what's in most women that they help you yeah. find the parking it just spot. But yes, because we know, we know, we know. <laughs> Not because we think they're stupid. <laughs> It doesn't occur to us that yes. you're stupid and you can't see a spot. It's like an instinct. Like, yes. you just have to yeah. say something. But the, but the pride in the man says, <laughs> I, can find I don't spot. need someone to help me find this parking spot. I got it. Yeah. You know, and so when we understand which that. Which is right. So when we understand that, that God made, like, he built in women. There you go. Yeah. That this is innately in yes. them. And it's in all of them. Yeah. To help. And so... We, we use this three-letter word that, that's really, in a marriage, could be almost considered a cuss word, the word nag. Mm. When it's not that, it's that she is trying to get him, <laughs> you know, 
help me help you. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> right? Help me help you. Heard that before. And so here's the thing. When every, and I'm going to talk how the, how the woman thinks, and maybe she can talk about how the man thinks. But the woman thinks, well, oh, she dreams of this, uh, as a little girl, dreams of this marriage and this knight in shining armor that, that rides in <laughs> on the white horse. Mm-hmm. And that's what she believes going to her wedding day, that that is who he is. And then, then we get into marriage. And then, <laughs> then there's children. And the man goes to work. You know, the man thinks, I'm the provider. I, I'm going to go out and kill so that we can eat. And, and provide a living for my family. I'm the protector. Yeah. So he comes home, and, and then the wife says, um, honey, I'm so glad you're home. Here, take over. You got the kids, um, and I'm, I'm taking a break. The man's thinking, I'm tired. I just went out and slaved for our family. Mm-hmm. And, but she thinks, I married the knight in shining armor. Like, he's invincible. Mm-hmm. He's inexhaustible. The kids think he is Superman. Yeah. And he walks home, you know. And he's tired and just wants to sit, on, you know, on the couch, put the put the seat back in the lazy boy, and have her rub his feet. Yeah, talk about that. <laughs> well, all of that is like, yeah. So it's actually a compliment. So it is. It's a compliment that she thinks that you're so highly of you. Yeah. Yeah, like, it, you know, it's ceaseless, tireless. Yeah. Like, you're Superman. <clears throat> like, there's, and that's what most wives think about their husbands is that you're not, I'm tired. You're not mm-hmm. tired. I'm, you're, you're better than me. You know what I mean? You're, you're stronger than me. You're, there's nothing you can't do. So, if men would see it that way a yeah. little bit more often instead of like selfishly, I want, I need downtime, mm-hmm. but to realize their wives are like, you are everything. So, th- so that verse in First Peter that she's talked about, it talks about how we have to have an, uh, an emphasis, says an, an intelligent recognition of the marriage relationship. We're, yeah, <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. It comes, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> an intelligent recognition of the marriage relationship. In that we are joint heirs, are are partners in this thing. Mm-hmm. In that you know, um, I'm not like. I am the head of the home, but but she's she's my teammate. She's yeah. with me, yeah. and so one of the things that we learned is we're not going to make and and talk going back to communication now. That we decided we weren't going to make any major decisions without us agreeing. Mm-hmm. So even if I went to her and said the Lord said, which is the trump card, bro, you know, uh, then if 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 she's not feeling that or hearing that, and she's not in agreement with that then there's time for her to pray about it and, and so that we can come into agreement that we're attacking this thing, you know, together as a team, as a couple. But at the same time, if he comes to me and says, this is what I'm hearing the Lord say, and I am just, and I, I, I've not even thought of that, I've, I don't know what to think about that, I, I should be looking within myself, am I, first, well, I can't be fearful. That's never going to be the right answer, you know. But I have to look within my spirit and say, is my spirit at peace or not at peace? Even if I don't know what to do, even if I've never thought about it, Mm -hmm. you know, if I'm not at peace, that's one thing. But typically if he comes to me and says, the Lord said to do this, I, I'm not going to have a problem with it, you know, but But even if, if, (laughs) even if, well, if if he says, if he doesn't say the Lord said, or he says (laughs) the Lord said and the Lord didn't say, (laughs) what becomes my job as the wife? Well, my job is he's, he's going to answer to God for this. And God's going to still protect me. But that's a faith issue. That's a love and a faith issue in someone bigger and higher than him. So, and I'm trusting God that if this is a real huge mistake, God God sees me being submissive and obedient to him, and he's going to honor that and get us out Mm -hmm. if he goes forward with this. Mm -hmm. And so having that understanding of how God sees it. That goes back to saying Mm -hmm. that one person has to always be... Thing. The right Somebody's got to break thing. the yeah. cycle. Yeah, it's crazy how that works, though. Yeah. We, uh, we use the analogy of like uh, the the ship or the plane's going down. Someone has to pull up. Yeah. Right? If both people don't want to pull up, you're definitely gonna yeah. you're gonna crash the plane. So well, the someone, plane's already going down. because yeah, both don't want. Yeah. To. Someone's so got to pull up. To. Pull up. Someone's yeah. got to get out of it. But so it's interesting because you're just newly wed ish. Right, a year. A year. <laughs> I'm not far ahead of you. You know what I mean? Like I'm not like like get it together, lady. When you're ready to talk, no. Yeah. Like, 
I'm at four years, and you guys are going on 27, 28 this year. This is amazing. Wow. And so I know where I was at year one versus year now is thank the Lord we got through. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was yeah. a learning curve of learning curves, a, a power personality that had to be a lot had to what you're talking about, like yeah, love and respect yeah. and that whole yeah. idea. And so I, I, when it comes to communication, like like tone, we said before, like I was raised in a loud house. <laughs> that yelling was just how you talk to someone across the dinner table. It wasn't, there was nothing behind it. This is just it, my tone. Yeah. This is just how I talk. Mm, this is my, what my face looks like. <laughs> I can't change it. <laughs> but that's not the house I'm in now. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so I've had to really, we've had to really adjust and like what I say versus how I say it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's been a huge, huge thing. So okay. going back to the yeah. roles, like if I, if I love and I know that she's not into that tone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, because I love her and yes. I don't want her to be, you know, because mm-hmm. of the tone, then then I make that change. Yeah. And if she's walking in hers of respect. Yeah. I mean, it goes back, all of this goes back to love. Like, if he's not doing everything right, am I supposed to hold him to that standard? No, I'm supposed to do what's right. Yeah. I yeah. got to worry about me. Yeah. So if he's not doing something right, I should within myself say something's wrong. Right. And what do you and do about it? Yeah. And so then I just... Be calm. Yeah. You know, you never want to speak in anger. I know that's seemingly sometimes impossible, but not with the Holy Spirit. You know, you cannot, just like you don't want to ever parent in anger. You don't want to ever discipline in anger. It's the same with your spouse. You don't want to say things out of anger. You don't, if one of you needs time to to get a minute or to gather your thoughts, that should be given, you know. I'm the processor. Yeah, he's the processor. I know right now. She knows right now. (laughs) And it's over. (laughs) <laughs> you know. Let me know when you're ready to agree with me. Yeah. yeah. I got to process this. Give me at least two days. Like I'll come and talk to him and he'll just sit there and I'll be like, did you hear what I said? He's like, I'm processing. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's the exact me. opposite. That's me. That's the I'm exact the processor. opposite. Yeah. Um, I have kind of like a weird question. We talk about like submitting and this is more like as a wife mm-hmm. and a woman, we talk about submitting and I feel like our culture, especially in millennials, Women don't like hearing the word no, submit. Does. And mm-hmm. I even, like, I can say up until I met my husband, I never, like, I was like, I don't like that. Like, I am my own individual person. I guess I want to know, like, what you think about, like, how do you get out of that mindset of doing something, being selfless and being able to, like, submit to your husband? And not just, because when you say submit, it's like, I'm not going to just do whatever he says, no matter what, because if he's in the wrong, what are you supposed to do as like this godly woman, a godly wife to correct him in the right way or to like, what do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because we're submit doesn't mean we don't talk. Yeah. You know, and he doesn't just tell me what we're going to do. I mean, even in his business, because when you hear that, that word, I feel like that's what people think is, oh, we're just supposed to do whatever wants us to do you know what I mean yeah no I mean I and I would think if they're getting that intelligent what was it (laughs) intelligent recognition Mm -hmm. of the marriage then they would and we're joint heirs of life then it's only smart for them to see what we think because as we all know men and women have different perspectives Mm -hmm. and we're going to see things differently and so you know I'm going to give him my opinion Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean I don't ever give him my opinion but if he doesn't agree with me Ultimately, I let him make the decision. Yeah. And but I want to give her a reason. I want to give her a reason to submit. Yeah. You know. Thank uh, you. <laughs> you know. That goes back to the love, though. Yeah. The love. Because there have hey, been times women where. Women don't have any problems submitting when the male is doing his part by loving. Loving, yeah. yeah. You know, we will um, always respect if they love. Mm-hmm. We, growing up, well, I say we really have grown up together because we were married when we were 21. And so when we would go to, uh, when we moved to Michigan, uh, be under her dad's ministry we'd have men's and women's meetings and in those meetings we would learn you know what a man's role is and she would learn what a wife's role is well there were times where you know I got us into trouble as a family because I didn't communicate right and I made this decision I might I might have passed it by her you know (laughs) I wasn't really looking for her okay okay on it you know this is what I was going to do and no matter what she would have said at that time, you know, it might not have been different. Mm-hmm. And so then if you have several of those and then you're still expecting men, you're still expecting her to do her scripture, 
mm-hmm. but you not do yours. You know, I, yeah. di- I didn't, I didn't love her enough to communicate, to, to get, to get agreement on it, to pray together, mm-hmm. you know, so I could, I could give you several instances of what not to do, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but the, the good place is to be where, you know, there's trust that's been established based on experience yeah. and not just faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're first starting out, you're still learning that. Yeah. You're still learning that. But mm. hopefully, you know, that's also the good time where you're like, you believe like stars are the limit. We're going to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're going to take the world, you know? Yeah. I remember one time uh, my buddy, he says, all these condos are flying off the shelf in Destin, Florida, and you got to get in. So I was like, okay. And, <laughs> and so there's urgency. There's, you know, so I send the check and we made money. I was like, honey, we just made money. We flipped this thing in three months. We made so much money. And so, and so but naturally. I helped, I helped with that. Yeah, yeah. She went down. She helped. She cleaned. She, uh, <laughs> she. What do you call it? Uh, just, just for the record. Yeah. She did a, a face. A deep no, rearranged it. Yeah. You know. Oh, all okay. That you stuff. Should, yeah. yeah. So naturally, you make you do that. You want to do it, not once but two more times. Yeah. <laughs> and then the market crashed, mm. and so. But any, you didn't ask me about the other ones. That's no, I did not. Going. That's what I, where I was going. So eight. So, oh, yeah. Yes, it was 08. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I got us into a huge mess. Oh. You know, so the first thing I did is I repented to God. Mm-hmm. I said, Lord, I, 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 you didn't even tell me to do that. I did that. And then I repented to her. And after those two things happened, the situation started turning back where God was able to get us out of those things. But that is not where people want to get to. Yeah. No. You know, and that's where the communication can save you from such – heartache and and it's really her dad's always said this and i believe it's true that the man is the key to the home because he's the head of the home so if the man isn't walking in love toward uh not only his wife but according but his children and being selfless Mm -hmm. because i believe men have more of a tendency to be selfish than selfless Um, because because it's innately in a woman to help exactly yeah that's biblical that Your they're more opinion. selfless <laughs> because they're helpers and it's in them. Mm-hmm. And so to me, the man has to work on that, you know, more um, and, and walk in that part of love. And I mean, kind of to your like submit the question, it's mm-hmm. like, I, and I think you guys ex- exemplify this. It, it's so easy to be on board mm-hmm. when you know someone's chasing after the Lord. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. when you see it in practice, like mm-hmm. when you know your spouse is in their word time, they're in like it's on the, the tip of their lips, it's in their heart, then they say something, you're like, I'm it's way easier for me to be on board with that. Absolutely. Versus left field, what? Yeah. <laughs> We're supposed to go where? Huh? Yeah. That doesn't yeah. sound right, you know? And <clears throat> and that is definitely a learning curve for experience. And I it's it's brutal. It's a, it can be a brutal learning curve if you're not willing to do the, the heavy work on your own time. Yeah. I think what you said about like everyone or each person having their roles and that being clear and defined before the marriage, it really helps things later on in the marriage. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like defining those roles and like before you even decide to get married, like making sure you have all of these things down on what it's going to be and holding each other to that. Yeah. Like this is my responsibility as your wife and this is your responsibility as the husband and like just holding each other accountable yeah. it really it, I, mean, I think that that's one difference. thing too the reason the church does like premarital right counseling is just to put all this on the table because sometimes you know they people come in they don't hear these things they've never heard these things yeah. and that's communication that's I, them teaching communication i'll be honest i went into premarital counseling not like i was like oh that's just something we got to do <laughs> yeah, but then i was like off. this is actually like really this has been yeah. very helpful it's very it's like we should right? do this yeah <laughs> some blind spots i didn't <laughs> yeah. know about uh let's address those before yeah, we say yes it was great yeah was i great. think that goes to um you know a lot of p- times people they, they need help. If they haven't gone through premarital, they need help. And it's like, who do we turn to for help? Right. You know, and it's like, you know, go to people who've done this before and mm-hmm. you see it. Well, the Bible says imitate those who through faith and patience are inheriting the promises. You see someone who has a good marriage, go to that person. Right. Yes. You know, a good Christian marriage, see that person. Talk to pastors, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. I think that's people need sometimes don't want to admit they need help. Yeah. You know, and, and it's fine. Who doesn't need help? Like that first verse we read goes on to talk about how how we're joint heirs together. Mm-hmm. Like this is a this is a team concept. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we're in this together. And so if one party is making decisions, it, 
in exclusion of the other party, then that is not how a team functions. Yeah. It's, that's dysfunctional. And, and is it because of that, like where you, the, the perspective changes? And I, I know as a husband, I, I you know, it's, it's I want to see my wife at her absolute best. Yeah. Like there's nothing in me that wants to, to be a reason that she's not shining. You know, and so it's kind of comes in the responsibility of like, man, I want to, I want to do everything I can in my power and my walk and my faith to make sure that my spouse is absolutely firing on all cylinders and vice versa. And you kind of get that, but it takes. <laughs> yeah. And it takes even what pastor uh, was preaching in January about reverence mm. to God, fear the Lord. If, if everybody's walking in fear of the Lord, like this, this reverence for God, this awe of him. He has all the answers. He has everything I need. You know, I'm going to turn to him for everything. If you're doing that, you're going to have answers. You're going to be walking right. It's those, it's the, the problem areas come when we do something apart from him. Yeah. When we don't reverence him, we don't think he has anything to say, or we're so prideful we think we already know, you know, what he's going to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not me. It's that woman you gave me. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm upset you. with you. <laughs> you know, Are you sure the Lord? Because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Well, you know, the Bible teaches us to walk in love. Yes, to be forgivers, mm-hmm. to be kind, to be tender-hearted toward one another. <laughs> I mean, what a what a great place to practice. Yeah, all of those things. And it wasn't even talking about you know, it wasn't excluding the marriage relationship. It wasn't saying outside of the marriage relationship, be kind, be tender-hearted. Mm-hmm. You know. Do you think, is it because of that that people are reluctant to admit when there's something going on, when they are struggling, when it's like, hey, I'm having a hard time with this? Because it, like you're saying, like, hey, if you get into the Word, if you, if you kind of seek, seek out the Word in the situation, you're probably going to get the answers. But we'll still have those like, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And I'll, I'd rather just, you know, steer my ship into a, a, a shipwreck. I mean, yeah, why do they do that? Yeah. I mean, that's where it's going to go. So I think that's a good question. I mean, if the... I think going back to communication, if we were talking about this before we started, but if you're if you're coming to church and you're reading your Bible and you're spending time with God, that's going to fix a lot of your problems. Yeah. Yes. You know, we were laughing beforehand, but God will always, you know, you want to pray about your marriage, but God's going to always talk to you about you. Always. He'll talk mm-hmm. to your spouse about them, but he's going to talk to you about you. And if you're hu- humble enough to do that, that's going to fix a lot of the problems. Mm-hmm. However, if if that's not fixing the problems, we were talking about this, then you know, and you're going to men's and women's meetings and you're trying doing all that you can, it's still not getting fixed. That's when you need to talk to someone because somebody might have a wrong perception based on experience or a stronghold yeah. in their life. And so they are, they don't see it, you know? And so that needs to get broken. I feel like a lot of people don't want to put in the work though, or, you know, it's a lot of, especially mm-hmm. when there's kids or you have other things work and then you, you have to actively be doing things in your marriage to ensure that it's healthy and like doing check-ins and things like that you know what I mean and that you are okay you've read your bible this week right okay yes yeah I have too okay like you know what I mean just like yes like making sure (laughs) and that's I mean that's holding each other accountable Mm -hmm. again like you have to be making sure that you're doing because it is a lot of work and people don't want to put in I'm I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying (laughs) it it is there is it takes effort and it takes a purpose and a focus yeah like, if you're just haphazardly going through your marriage, your marriage will be haphazard. Yeah. I mean, it takes an intentionality with the time you spend with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, romance is the easy part until yeah. somebody makes you mad. Yeah. And then there's no romance anymore. And that's when, <laughs> <laughs> that's when communication comes into play, yeah. you know? Yeah. It does. So, yeah, it's an important part. And it's important, I think, too, the, um, you know, just in a general sense, that you're, ju- you're having fun. This is This is like... This is your teammate. That's good. This is your teammate in life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if you, you know you laugh a lot, you you plan things, you plan to have fun. Mm-hmm. You need that break from the routine of the checklist. Yeah. The kids change the diaper, go to work. You know, did you read your Bible? Did you mm-hmm. did you pray? Did you okay schedule in some fun in there? Yeah. yeah. A little bit. Mm-hmm. Have a laugh. It's, have a laugh. It's healthy. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. <laughs> Which will will leads us to I think like the the major question that's kind of been like encapsulating this series has been what our, our church is, you know, making winners in life. But according to you, what is make, wait, what is making winners in marriage? That was nice. Wasn't it? I like, that was a remix. Yeah. (laughs) Um, You know, the Bible says that we overcome the the world. What overcomes the world is our faith. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a determination that 
no matter what we come up against, we're never going to quit. Mm. We will yeah. never quit. That's not even an option. Yeah. The, the D word doesn't come out of our mouths. Yeah. Good. So w- no matter what we come against, we're going to, we're going to fight together. Mm-hmm. We're going to figure it out. You know, we're in this together. We're going to win. Yeah. You serve the God who made the universe. I think he can fix your marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he probably has an idea and a suggestion. And so I think it's staying humble. But I think, you know, I know we say this a lot, but it comes back to um, you'll have a winning marriage if you'll just do the word. Good. If you'll just do the word, you'll, you'll ha- I promise you. We've, we've experienced it. The, the last thing you want to do when you have a disagreement is pray together. Oh yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if you can still pray together, you're doing good. And this would be your prayer. Oh. Lord, help her. <laughs> help her. Jesus. Help him. Help him, Jesus. Feel that Jezebel spirit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that, that's a funny point, but a good point. If you can still pray for your spouse, that's yeah. good. If you can't pray for your spouse, something's wrong with your heart. Yeah. yeah. So for check sure. your heart. For sure. Yeah. It's amazing. Wow. I'm going to text my husband after this and tell him I love him. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, that was great. Thank you all so much. I feel inspired. Very inspired. How do you feel? I love it. I love these conversations. And I I love that you guys are doing marriage well. Like, it it makes us so happy that are here, that are are in this house to see you guys. And it's just amazing. You guys are awesome. I'm glad you get to to see us 27 years in. Yeah. (laughs) And and we're we're still here. And and we're getting to Well, what would you you tell yourselves year one? Or five? You said five. I'm going. I'm at four. Four. So together we're five. What's, <laughs> I, I well, I think I would go back and tell myself that that um, that baseball jersey that your got your guy friends bought you that said submit on the back when you got engaged and you burned it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> It'll all work out. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, we'll have to hear more about this um, after. So on that after, note. After that, what about you? What would you tell just for Dan? <laughs> I would just say, you know, enjoy Don't the Don't buy moment. that girl her jersey? Don't buy that jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Buy that jersey. yeah. <laughs> I, I would just say, you know, enjoy the moment. Because yeah. a lot of times when you're young married, you're, you're in this achieving mode where you're trying to acquire things. You're, you want the new bedroom suit. You want this. You want that. And there's always something you're going after, the new home, the new this, the new that. And you miss the moments. Enjoy where you are. You miss the moments. That's good. I that like are, that. That are the end moment that you're in yeah. right now. Yeah. And so I, if I could go back and change that, I would have I would have thrown my cell phone in the lake, <laughs> whipped her up, Instead of me bent her over and kissed her. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Treasure the moment. Treasure, yes. you know, be. Have as many as you can. That's be good. where you're at. Right. Yeah. At the moment. That's awesome. I like that. What a, what a good way to end I know, the series, right? right? Wow. That was great. February. Ah. Well, thank you all <laughs> so much for listening to another episode of Winning Conversations, and see us next week for more. <laughs>